in June at Water's Edge, there will be a strategy session on strategic corporate sustainability by Dr. Ravi Fernando. Today we have with us Dr. Ravi Fernando to speak a few words on this book that he has also launched, which is on strategic corporate sustainability. Dr. Ravi Fernando is the executive in residence at INSEAD Business School, France, and much of his academic work is done at Cambridge University, UK, and the in European University in Geneva. Dr. Fernando, uh, thank you for being with us. Could you tell us how the concept of strategic corporate sustainability emerged? Whilst I was at Cambridge University focusing on my master's degree, uh, and also further on into my doctorate at the European University, I began to look at the linkage between blue ocean strategy and sustainability. And increasingly, I began to see the connection between creating new market spaces and also doing so in a sustainable manner. And that really is how the term strategic corporate sustainability was coined by me. And it, today I have a US uh, copyright on this, uh, which I applied for in 2010. And the basic concept of strategic corporate sustainability is that every corporate in the future needs to first embed sustainability in its corporate strategy. Secondly, having done so, it needs to differentiate itself on the global platform on a sustainability uh, paradigm. So strategic corporate sustainability is, when an, is achieved when a business first embeds sustainability and secondly, makes sure that it's differentiated on a sustainability paradigm. Thank you. You, you refer to the seven imperatives in your book. Could you kindly elaborate a little bit on this? So I must say that the seven imperatives for strategic business or strategic sustainable business emerged through a comprehensive bit of empirical research which I conducted. And these seven imperatives emerged from the research as must do essentials for any business who is serious about being a sustainable business. And I must say that it is equally applicable to a sustainable nation. So what are these seven imperatives? Imperative number one is that any business who wants to achieve sustainability should start with having a chief executive officer or a chairman of the board who is what I call a triple bottom line mindset sustainability driven leader unless and until you have a sustainability mindset leader at the very helm that is one of the key imperatives for us to get to the second imperative the second imperative is once you have the right leader on board that leader needs to frame and position strategic corporate sustainability as a growth strategy and not just a doing good strategy. Lots of companies think that doing some CSR or doing some good is the be all and end all of business. That's not the case. Now the CEO has to frame and position this as a growth strategy for the organization. The third imperative is that a business needs to ensure that it has a corporate governance mechanism to drive sustainability through the organization. So the third imperative is to have in place a sustainable governance mechanism in terms of board, corporate uh, di directors, and also in terms of operations. The fourth imperative is where we look at business creating one strategy. In most cases, business tends to have two strategies, a corporate strategy and a CSR strategy, a corporate strategy and a sustainability strategy. And that's why they never achieve anything much in strategic corporate sustainability. I believe that the fourth key imperative is that corporate strategy is 
truly developed when you embed sustainability into the corporate strategy and they are one and the same thing. So we talk about one strategy. The fifth imperative is that every business needs to manage its stakeholders. And today when we talk about stakeholder management, it is not only shareholders. Shareholders are just one stakeholder. You have to manage all your environmental stewardship stake stakeholders and also all your social sustainability stakeholders. And when you do that, then you begin to have strategic stakeholder management. Your sixth imperative is to ensure that sustainability strategy is now so well integrated that you are measuring sustainability, rewarding sustainability, and ensuring you are reporting sustainability. And that's your sixth imperative. Any business which doesn't do all three of them is probably on a wrong footing. So the last and the seventh imperative is when a business is able to ensure its future growth is energized through sustainability. So differentiating your organization on a sustainability platform and driving sustainable innovation. And I think the best three examples of companies which have done all seven of these imperatives and which have really today are leading the world in this. Our number one is Tesla. Elon Musk is a sustainable mindset leader. His global strategy is one of embedding sustainability in corporate strategy. He's creating a new blue ocean market space for, for uh, uh, electric vehicles. And I think he represents what I would call a truly sustainable mindset leader. In addition to him, General Electric's Jeff Immelt and also Paul Pullman of Unilever have strived to do so. So these are the seven imperatives and these are some of the world businesses who are embedding sustainability in corporate strategy and following those seven imperatives. Every Sri Lankan business should ideally look at themselves and ask themselves the question, where are we with each of these seven imperatives? And they need to reorganize themselves and have strategies to ensure these seven imperatives become part of their business. I'm sure many of our Sri Lankan business leaders too will be following suit in this uh, area of uh, making sure that they are also driving sustainability this way. You also referred to the um, the one strategy, the fourth impairment that you have mentioned in your book. In the light of uh, what was launched last September by the United Nations as the global sustainability goals for uh, the world, how do these connect with this strategy? Could you elaborate a bit on that for us, please? Sure, Ratika. The United Nations on the 25th of September launched the 17 Sustainable Development Goals. The 17 Sustainable Development Goals have 169 actions. Now, this was a follow-up to the Millennium Development Goals that were launched between 2000 and 2015. There were, at that time, there were eight goals. However, all the research confirms that not more than four of them were achieved. And one of the major reasons attributed to the non-achievement of the Millennium Development Goals, as mentioned by both the uh, Secretary General and also Georg Kell, who was the Executive Director of uh, Global Compact, is that business did not get engaged in the sustainable development agenda of the world. And therefore, the Millennium Development Goals did not happen. Now, I'm a strong believer that business has to engage in the Sustainable Development Goals. But business can engage in the Sustainable Development Goals only if we first have governments setting sustainable policy. Sustainable policy to advocate and drive sustainability in the country. Then business will have strategic corporate sustainability in place. And that will lead to consumers buying in a sustainable way and driving sustainable consumption. Now, what I created 
for most of my doctoral studies was a matrix called the Strategic Corporate Sustainability Business Engagement Matrix. And in that business engagement matrix, I was able to help business to identify which of the UN Sustainable Development Goals, each of them, depending on what industry they are in, should engage with in terms of the big UN SDGs. It is my belief that every business needs to first engage with the environmental sustainable development goals. And the big one there is driving towards renewable energy. There's no business being in sustainable business if your business is not striving to be driven by renewable energy. And I believe that is the first imperative, first goal that every business must get involved in. The second goal is that every business needs to look at their, their business and engage with a goal that strategically differentiates themselves. So if you are a company in tourism, you better get involved in the environment, especially in terms of reforestation. If you are a business in education and communication, there's an opportunity to help communicate education better. If you are a business in apparel, where a majority of the people involved in that sector are women, then women's empowerment becomes your strategic differentiator. So I believe that engaging with the UN Sustainable Development Goals must be very focused, very strategic, and more than anything else, you do not really need to go and start embedding and uh, engaging with all of them. You need to pick the two or three that are strategically differentiating yourself and helping your carbon footprint as a business to, to absolutely come down. On 15 June at Water's Edge, Dr. Ravi Fernando will be conducting a strategy session on strategic corporate sustainability. Be there. You should not be missing this, and I'm sure you will gain much. Thank you, Ravi. Thank you very much. I, I also want to say thank you to Ratika De Silva for being here and to Dharana for conducting this interview. I, I believe that many Sri Lankan organizations can benefit if they begin to move towards the seven imperatives for sustainable business. Thank you very much.